When I first got the email that EK just launched their brand new line of AIOs, I was super, super stoked. In all honesty, I thought that they were one of the best looking liquid coolers on the entire market. When I first built my computer over here, I bought an Asus Strix LC120, thinking that you can change the LC, the, it's not an LCD screen. I thought it was an LCD screen. It's not, it's just the Asus logo and you can change the color of it. It's cool, but it didn't really fit what I was looking for. I was hoping to maybe put up a Rangers logo or a GIF or, or something like that. Not what I was looking for. Okay. When I saw these AIOs launch, I thought it would be a perfect fit for this build. I will show you in a minute what I mean. I think it has the most beautiful looking pump top on any AIO on the market. And they're dirt cheap. I mean, you'd expect for something like for something like that to cost over a hundred and hundred and thirty, hundred and forty dollars. But anyways, the cooler I, I pre-ordered this thing in February um, for eighty nine dollars or no eighty dollars and ninety nine cents. Why eighty one and not eighty? I don't know, but like that's pretty cheap. And the two forty and three sixty versions aren't that much expensive either. Um, I think the two forty. I'll throw a picture up here on the screen. The two forty goes for I think one twenty, and the three sixty goes for like one forty which is really impressive that they've been able to do that because these things provide amazing cooling performance. So this video is not going to go too in depth of all the specifications and uh, an installation guide. It's not going to be any kind of that. I'm just going to show you what's in the box. Um, uh, and I'm just going to put it together. I'm not really going to show you the whole process of how to put it together. I can't really do that. Unfortunately, because I don't have the proper equipment for that. All I really have is this camera and the tripod that it's on. Also, I just didn't have the lighting for it. It was way too dark in there. And this camera, I have a Canon T6i. It's not the best in low light. So I figured it would just be best to not really shoot anything. It was easier for me to, I was able to put it together faster. Anyways, let's just uh, get right into the unboxing here. So what comes included in the box is the EK AIO, obviously, a Vardar, um, in my case, one Vardar RGB fan. If you bought the 240 or the 360, you'd come with two or three, but I have the 120, so I got one Vardar fan. I'm not actually going to be using that Vardar fan today because I already have my QL 120s in there and a push-pull. You also get all the mounting equipment, you know, your, your thumb nuts, you get some pressure loading springs that you have to put on there too, which I thought is pretty neat. It actually uh, it helps to add a little bit of mounting pressure when you're screwing on the thumb nuts. Now, I did mention that I ordered this thing back in February and it was supposed to ship uh, at the end of February. I ordered it around the middle, so I was supposed to wait about two weeks before this thing actually shipped out. Um, that obviously not being the case with the current situation going on in the world. I received an email saying that the shipment was going to be delayed. Unfortunate, but it, it is what it is. They told me it was going to be delayed until I think a month later around the end of March. But they did say that they were also going to be sending an EK promo pack. Um, I didn't know what that was. I googled it. It does. It's not a thing. So I was excited to get not only my AIO, but whatever the hell could be in this promo pack. I thought maybe like a t-shirt or something. Um, You'll, you'll see in a minute that's not at all what they sent. And I'm not mad or anything, it's just, I just think it's kind of, kind of funny. Around the end of March, I get another email saying that it's gonna be delayed again until the end of April. It actually ended up shipping on the 20th of April and I got it two days later, which is very impressive considering I live in New York and they're shipping it from Slovenia using DHL, which for anyone that's ever shipped with DHL, they're not the quickest. Every package that you send with DHL has to go, no matter where it's going, it could be going from uh, California to Nevada and it has to go from California to Germany then come back to the United States anyways blah, blah, I'm rambling on here so what I found in this EK promo pack was a bag now at first I was quite scared of this bag because I didn't know what its contents were and it looked very menacing to me but upon inspecting the bag which looks like this and I'll show it in the video too I received this Oh, wait, wait, and this. I waited two extra months for a notebook. Oh, wait, I forgot. And this, which I didn't know what it was for two days until I just, it's a USB, like, SD card thing, or like a thumb drive that you can put in like your wallet. I guess this is cool, but like, thanks, EK, now I can, 
Now I can, uh, well, shit, I really don't know what I can do with this. I just hope this pen is good, though, because I write pretty much everything in pen. It has a good click to it. Looks like a good pen. I don't know. Should I do a pen review? Would you guys be interested in that? So obviously I can't sit here and talk about a CPU cooler if I don't show you any temperatures. And to be honest, I was extremely impressed with this thing. It has an old copper cold plate. Um, I believe it's a DDC pump. I'm not sure, but typically all AIOs have a DDC in them. Once again, this is not an in-depth, uh, you know, specification video. I'll throw a link to the thing in the description. You can go look at all the specs on the website if you're interested. So anyways, like I said before, the previous cooler I had on here was an Asus Strix LC120. And under max load, I would get around 68 to 69 degrees C topping out on the CPU over about 15 minutes on Ida64. My new EK cool over here, I don't know if it's because I clean out the dust filters. Um, obviously, I'm not conducting a scientific investigation here. Um, the room conditions were most likely pretty much the same. Um, I did clean off the dust filter on the EKIO though one, so just take these temperatures with a grain of salt here. But pretty much, I dropped that temperature by about 7 degrees C, which may not sound like a lot, but just for simply cleaning off a dust filter and just changing out a cooler, that's kind of a lot. I mean, I really didn't do much other than that. I used the same thermal compound. Uh, the same case, the same airflow, the same fan curve, everything was stock. Another problem that I face with this thing is that it has a 3-pin 5-volt connector on it, and my motherboard only has a 4-pin 12-volt, and if you plug a 3-pin into a 4-pin, you could kill the lights on it because you're sending 12 volts to a 5-volt light, and that's too much power. Anyway, that's kind of an issue. So. Luckily for me, Deepcool makes this tiny little device, literally like about this big. So you connect it to SATA, you connect it to your 12 volt header, and then it splits it into some 12 volt connectors and into some 5 volt. So I just plug that into the 5 volt and I was good. I can now use my RGB. And anyways, I think the final result turned out pretty freaking sick. Have a look for yourself.